আলিশারা and you providing services yeah that something not many people can provide mm. because not hazar boro masabo you can't talk to them because they don't know your language uh amma boy lo itona because they don't know your language too you don't know sign language so for them is everything is useless quran and everything is for them is not there they can't do anything and you guys took that part subhanallah may Allah bless you brothers Amen. you took that part and trying to teach them the din Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's beautiful. How did you come about doing Alishara and tell us how, what kind of service you provide? Well, Alishara started about nine years ago now, alhamdulillah. Um, it was through an, an experience another deaf, a hard of hearing brother had. He was a social worker and he was working with a family. And a Muslim a mother approached this brother and said, who, whose who's, um, child is deaf, approached his brother and said, brother, how do I teach my daughter about Islam? Oh. And this brother, he was hard of hearing, so he can hear small bits and read, etc. And he was, um, but he just froze there and he thought about it and realized there is nothing out there for children to learn about Islam. Now I just want to stop there and just like, there's something for us to all think about. As in, as a child, we all, alhamdulillah, were blessed with imams and mesabs all over the country, all over, the world really, we had that opportunity, we all had that service, that facility available for us. But this child, this young child, this young girl didn't have that. As in, it had, someone had to go out the way and think about it and start something. Alhamdulillah, the brother did that. From within, his, him and his wife, they started it, Ali Shara from a garage. And from there they grew, we did the first uh, ever, sorry, we translate the khutbah into BSL as well. So, so they did that. We've got a, a dedicated Islamic school for deaf children. So when you say your first time in, in, yeah. in, the, in the probably history of UK, a khutbah done in sign language. Yeah, quite literally. As you ma- how, long, how long was that ago? That was again one of the first services we did. So, so again, it would be eight years, years no? eight, eight years ago, I would say. Eight years. So before yeah. eight years, there was nothing then? There was nothing. It was literally blank. It was no one was thinking about it, talking about it, doing anything about it. There so imagine they come to, they come to prayer. Yeah. And they, they do pray because the parents yeah. come with the parents. They have, they've got no choice actually anymore. Mm. And they just, I remember one of, one of the, our, our deaf brother I asked the other day, so when you used to come to the mosque, what happens? Mm. And he used to say, I don't know. I keep looking at people. They keep saying something. I don't know what's going on. People, some people cry in the, in, in, mm. in the khutbahs and, and taraweeh and he said, I don't know what's going on here. Why are they crying? What's mm. going on? You know, to him, it's, yeah. it's almost nothing. So it's you provided that khutbah for them. And the first khutbah, I was going to ask you, first, the translator of the, uh, the sign language was not Muslim as well. Yeah, the interpreters were not Muslim, as in they were non-Muslims translating the um, khutbah into BSL, which is, Br- which is British Sign Language. So imagine that as well. As in, um, it's, it's sad and funny because I had an um, encounter with another a sister, where, no sister, a non-Muslim sister who, was working, who I work with. And I was telling her about Alishara and how, we sta- how it started and when it started. She actually laughed at me. And I was like, why are you laughing at me? She goes, it took you eight, it took you what? How ha- she first, uh, first asked, how long has Islam been around for? And I said, over oh, 1,400 years or longer, and it, I'm sorry, 14,000 years. And um, then she goes, how long has BSL been around for? And I said, for a while, about 60, 70 years now. And then she goes, how long has Ali Shara been around for? Oh. Then I said, eight. <laughs> that, then at that time, it was about six years. So I said, six years. She goes, so it took you 40, 44 years to understand that this community needs you. And at, th- at that point, that was a non-Muslim woman telling me this. And I was like, wow. That's true. 
And this is because with other faiths, especially with Christianity, they have this service available for them from ages ago. Does that mean we don't really have any anywhere else in the world? I'm sure they have. They, there is, like every other country, for instance, um, Saudi Arabia, there is Arabic sign language. But the problem is, for instance, the best way to understand this is, um, if I was to go to, say, um, let me name a country, say, um, Italy, for instance, they speak Italian, they don't speak an ounce of English at all, oh. and they was teaching Islam in Italian, I wouldn't be able to go there and learn that, because I don't know Italian. That's the same for the deaf mm -hmm. brothers. Within sign language, you have different different cultures, different like dialects, different languages within the sign language. So you have British sign language, you have American sign language, you have French sign language, you have Bangladeshi sign okay. language. It exists. People like that, they can't interact with one another because they don't understand each other. Cause that's another language, another... We need to think of it like that. So it's not as easy as like us saying, oh, uh, I heard America, they do sign language. Why can't they just learn it from there? I heard Saudi Arabia, I, I saw a video where um, the Sheikh was translating the Quran into Arabic sign language. Why don't they just learn it there? They can't, because that's not the language. What we're doing is translating it into their language, which is British sign language. So what, what else do you do for them? So Quran, they can't go to Madrasha, they can't no. go to school, they can't go to, you know, mm. Maktab anyway. For them, it's, that is, is, you know, it's mm. almost... I don't Sorry. know, I'm sure, I'm assuming, even the parents, they don't know sign languages. They can't teach them, you know, the, the deen. Quran, there's one mm. Allah, there's the last. It's person. very difficult. You can't because yeah. you don't know how to do it. You, whatever you say, can't hear you. Mm. He might show you like, okay, okay, okay. I want some food, so you just say okay, yeah. okay, whatever you say. There's nothing else. We don't know what he's talking about. Okay. So, you took that part. So, how does it? How do you teach them Quran? So, um, the, with the Quran aspect, we have the oral class, which is for the students who are hard of hearing. You know how I mentioned how some are hear muffled sounds. Not clear sounds, muffled sounds, and some are who are totally deaf. So with the oral class, those who are hard of hearing, they can actually try and read out the Quran from what they can hear. So even the slightest bit. And when you uh, during our last deaf dinner event, we had a deaf child who came up and read a surah. She was deaf. She did it. She had the courage to do it. Mashallah, she did it. So that's the oral class. And then we have the BSL class, where. Um, they learn the surahs, they learn, learn what the surah is about, the understanding behind it. But that saying is like, it's not direct translation. So it's going from um, Arabic to English, then BSL. So what we want to do in the future, inshallah, is, we'll, is go direct, because you want the translation to be as pure and as clear as possible. At the moment, we've translated um, Surah Fatiha into BSL. That's been done. And inshallah, in the future, we want to translate the whole Quran. It hasn't been done before, and that's something we want to work towards. Not just as Ali Shara, but as a whole community. As in, we want everyone to get involved and help the brothers. So that's the Quran side. Um, with the madrash, as you were mentioning earlier, again, we were one of the first. Um, we we were the first Islamic children's Islamic school, the only one in the country at that point. And it's like. You have to, like, there's something to think about is how many Imams in our area are deaf aware? How many? I don't know, not many. Well, we could do this. <laughs> That's it, everyone could give the salam. That's yeah. like, even yeah. Duraitak is when if you wanted to speak to someone and they can't hear you, you'd use Ishara. It's a natural thing to do. You use your sign, as in, I'm going, I'm going. You just do that. Oh, Assalamu alaikum, balani. It's like you do that naturally. But there are specific signs needed for a deaf okay. person to interact. Mahfuz, you know some of the language, I mean sign, a bit of a it. Bit, a if bit. someone's watching, could you say, could you welcome them and say salam to them? If yeah, I could watching. say assalamu alaikum, um, how are you, are you good? Um, just, yeah, just basic stuff. But inshallah, I, wanna, I want to learn, f become... Can you say for us that we love them? Can you, yeah. do it? Can you tell them? Um, Say so. I think it's something like this. I could be. I could be completely wrong. Okay. So do forgive me. So we all, I think, love you. That's it. Mashallah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, would you like to say something about the Ali Shara uh, role they're playing in the Muslim community, especially with the deaf Muslims? Sorry, what do you mean by that? I mean, you know, like they have a lot of projects. Yeah. And they have a lot of activities as well. So you. Um, in my experience. Yeah. Um, so the projects that I was aware of from back when I started, uh, and there's Defran, 
uh, death dinner. There's also Ramadan car wash, and this year we, there was a there was a iftar as well uh, for the deaf community of Muslims. And I think the there are other services, but these are all the events that take place to make sure that all the community come together and just to like fundraise in terms of. I think for deaf run you fundraise. Well, we fundraise in four. Okay, so we're going to come to that at the end. So, okay. Um, so when you meet these, you know, yeah. amazing people, actually, they are amazing. I know I met some of them, they're married, they got children, they work, they got car. There's something also provide, look and find jobs for them. Also, there is marriage venue or something yeah. for them, isn't it? How, where do you get all these ideas and how did you get them together? You just, wow. I don't know, man. How did you get with all these the, With the marriage service, it was actually by demand, actually. Because there was, no, again, sadly, there was nothing out there for them. So for us, it's very easy, as in we have our parents, we have uh, the community to look out for you, or get, why don't you get married this, or they give, give you proposals, etc. You have this bio data thing, business going on. Um, whereas with the deaf community, it's literally, go find, it, go find your wife, go find your husband. So how do you do that? How do they do that? The, uh, the, old, the other alternative is to go through haram means, which is to go, uh, but they've got no other choice. So w the reason why Alishara pro provides this service, so I started this service, it's purely to make it as halal as possible for them and to give them a way, way into marriage. Because there's a lot of deaf brothers and sisters who want to get married, have all, everything, they're ready to get married. Give but us they a just story, okay, anyone. because you're providing the service, I'm sure. There are I, I tend Tell to stay away from the deaf <laughs> marriage service <laughs> okay. myself. <laughs> because you're not married, is that why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why we stay okay. away from that, as in like. Okay. Because we want to keep it as halal as possible. No, 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 subhanAllah, no, no, that's an amazing concept. You know, it's like uh, everything's in their place. You know, you, you learn, you got madrasha, you got, um, if you're looking for a wife, you got, you know, It's a lifetime husband. service. Um, it's, 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 it's beautiful, honestly, it's beautiful. Um, do you know any, in any of the stories of our, some of our brothers are river brothers, I, yeah. I, I saw in your um, services. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's bugging me to know how, and subhanAllah, can, can anybody invite people Abu have a caller. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Assalamu alaikum, Shaq boy. So, how are you? Come on, Yeah, Alhamdulillah. It's Abdul Hanan speaking from Rollers Boxing. All right, sir. Yes. Are you watching us? What do you think? Yeah, I've been watching the show, Alhamdulillah. It's amazing. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, to Mahfouj and all the brothers out there in Ali Shara, they do a fantastic job uh, year in and year out. And it's amazing to see so many participants running at the Ali Shara Def Run. And I'm going to say that oh, hopefully okay. we'll bring as many youngsters as possible to participate in this year's race. Inshallah. You know, we are very proud of you, brothers. Yeah. The ones that are playing a role in that you know, project. It's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing. And even today, our younger brothers are here, you know, trying to make aware of the uh, problem we have. And then, you know, we don't know how far we're going to go, but inshallah, it's looking really, really good. You know, really inspirational. That's right, inshallah. Uh, the first year, we had 37 participants um, running from our side in Bowlers Boxing. Last year, we had 65 participants. This year, I'm trying to smash the record inshallah. to about around 75 to 100 participants, hopefully, and create much needed awareness for Ali Shara and the amazing work that they do. And it needs to be recognized, and people need to get involved and help out charity causes like Ali Shara. And, Awareness. These, Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Thanks for your I call, though. Like, Asla yeah, Asalaamu Alaikum. Are you still there? Okay, sir. No same. problem. Brothers from Ballers Boxing, they're honestly, they're one of the most beautiful brothers in life. Their hearts, they, what they do for Ali Shara. I mean, they've been supporting us for a couple of years now, and every year, the love they give us is honestly, it's unbelievable. And you know what? We make dua for that. Allah blesses your organization and blesses you, brothers. And Gets, makes the organization stronger and stronger and Jazakallah khair, honestly, we, we love you all. Okay, if you know like uh, there are lots of uh, people don't know um, how to, or where to, you know, get this kind of services, mm. is there any, do you have any plans to move into outside of London? Do you have? Yeah, definitely, as in we want to go all over the country, as in we want to go Manchester, we want to go Scotland, we want to go Glasgow, we want to go Cardiff, we want to go Liverpool, name it. We want to make this service available to everybody because there is a need for it. There is a need for good quality services for the deaf ummah, deaf community. 
And um, not only that, we want to also expand on another service, as in, you know, when a deaf child is born, we want to be there from the beginning. We want to be there. So as soon as a deaf child is born within a Muslim household, we're there for them. We're there to help the parents deal with the situation. We're, the help, we're there to help the child when, as, when he grows up. We want to be there from the beginning to the end. We want to... We want to you know, that, that would be it. something very amazing. Yeah. That's the emotional side, you know, like, um, especially in our community, um, other community too, I'm sure, definitely, when somebody's born deaf, for the parents, yes, it's blessing, of course, but, you know, like, to accept it and, and, and to become mature in everybody's job, honestly, it takes time. And the people around you, you know, you know those issues around. And then they blame the mother. You know those funny comments people make mm. around them. It's just like, why? What happened? What have you done? It's just like people are blaming on those parents. It's just like it's their, it's their problem. It's mm. like they, they done something about it. Yeah. You know, this is quite evil, honestly. It's really evil. It definitely thing. Is, definitely. It's the time you're trying to people say, look, Allah said yeah. what happened. This is our belief. Allah decided what happened. We don't decide anything. Mm. Make dua and do your best for that person. And that person can take you to power. These exactly. people will be easily take you there because they, are, they don't have everything. So they, they don't have that responsibility. We don't see that bright side of it, actually. Mm. So after that, you want to go to every house. MashaAllah, that would be an amazing thing to do. I'm uh, going to go to Look. We started five probably like 20 years ago. We didn't have, have charities. We didn't have many cha organized charities. But this year, what they're saying we've raised 100 million pound Muslim done that in this country, UK. It's a massive, mm. big thing. You know, it's may Allah bless all these brothers who started I mean. it. But like you guys are starting it, it's an amazing project, honestly. So I was talking about that brother who became um, a Muslim. Yeah. He's a he's a English brother, river brother. How did he become Muslim? I'm sure someone had to sign him in and give him dawah. Yeah, um, he um, he met a sister, I think, and um, through Ali Shara, and he met her. He spoke to her. He be, and um, sooner or later, I think he he realized that he heard about Islam from her, and then he heard about Ali Shara and he learned about Islam. And slowly but surely, he did get married to the sister, mm -hmm. and he continued to learn, became a Muslim then. But then the thing he did afterwards was even more beautiful. He learned it to an extent where he was able to give up, go out and give dawah himself. So that's what's that's what's something we want to do. We want to empower the deaf community into helping helping the, the other deaf people. Not just thinking I've got it now and that's me done, but giving that having that giving back ethos there. And mashallah, this brother has amazingly, even during Deaf Dina, he spoke about his story and how much um, he loves the charity and how much he loves Islam. So it's amazing, these brothers. You know, I've, I've met him a few times, actually. It's, um, can you imagine, it's his choice. And he wants to express and that love he you know, learned in the Quran and the Hadith and through that sister, subhanAllah. Mm. And he went out and telling people and making other people becoming, mm. uh, coming to the same choice he made. How, uh, how you know, it's, it's so beautiful, honestly. Yeah. And that couldn't be done by any, anybody else apart from the sign language. And Alhamdulillah, I know you guys are also um, recruiting people or training people to become a specialized in sign language. Yeah, what, what we like to do is, inshallah, in the future, uh, for in, the, in the next few um, years, within, within a few years actually, is um, have BSL workshops. But more specifically, you have BSL workshops already um, um, carried out by the local government, so in these libraries, etc. But what we want to do is teach um, Islamic sign language at the same time. So this is something no one else can do. As in this is something very unique to us as well. Would you be in Islamic sign language? So for instance, like, inshallah, an English person wouldn't really know how to sign that, but because we've already created that sign, so it's like, inshallah. So again, stuff like that. We want to teach our um, interpreters, the upcoming interpreters, and those who want to learn BSL to do the Islamic side as well, so there's a clear understanding. I remember I went to um, last um, Eid, Eid day, so I saw some of the brothers are doing sign language, and mm. also when the Imam was saying, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, Allah, 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 and then the brother was with the way he was doing his sign language, he was subhanallah, only mm. 
it's amazing. I can hear the sound. And then when he was explaining, I was just hitting my heart, just like bang, bang. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. it just, literally, mm. I just had to cry for it. You know, it's just like, wow, amazing. Um, Jamil Bhai, tell me about yourself. I know you are uh, studying, um, is it your last year you said in university? Uh, just finished my second year. I'm the second year. So what do you want to do after your education? Uh, I'm not too sure at the moment, but I've still been looking at the financial sector and investment itself. But, yeah, you wherever. Money, give it to other <laughs> is, is that what you're <laughs> <telling>? <laughs> I'm not too sure, maybe. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. What my skills say. It's all about your skills, I say. But yeah, I'd I'm sure that it's very difficult, skills. you know, doing yeah. a, you know a uh, full time course and your, your university mm -hmm. and putting more time with the Shara. You know, how do you manage it? Uh, that's one of the skill sets I've been. You have to develop while on the thing. You have to manage time management is key. So I think Ali Shara wise, it's not throughout the whole year you get like different type of events at different times. So. I think uh, we get notified beforehand when the events are coming up and when they need you. I mean, it's not forceful. It's in the sense if you're available, you come in and help out as much as you can. And that's it. Yeah, when I don't have no university going on, I've got three time, I'll go down and give my time. Who calls you? Zia by your Mahfuz Bay? Both. There's a lot of people that Zia by Mahfuz Bay, they message you, the emails come in. There's a lot of contact. There's a lot of ways you can get contact. Zia by, if he comes behind you, that's he's going to make you do it. <laughs> 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 he's make, no, no if he's watching now, he's going to be. <laughs> Very messaging me right now. And then, uh, with him, he'll come back to you. He says, he texts you and he calls you yeah. and he emails you and say, It's good. It's it? amazing. It's yeah. Alhamdulillah, amazing. You know, subhanAllah. Like, can you imagine how many brothers we have, like Jia and Mafu and all that stuff? He's, he wants to be a doctor. Anyway, yeah, I'll I go to him actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me divert to him then. Okay. We'll give you a break. <laughs> Mafu yeah. you are, inshallah, uh, last year to become a doctor. Inshallah, fun, yeah. It's it's tough job. It's being studying and, and doing all this community work and um, it's difficult. How do you make time for yourself? It's difficult but that's not the way I see it. The way I see it is the most free, t actually you know what, one of my mentors, actually brother Zia himself, I consider him my mentor, he tells me everything I need to know and inshallah I go by that. He actually told me and I believe it now as in the most free time you're going to have is during the university years because once you leave university, once you've got a job, you're going to become even more busier. You're not going to be as flexible. You're going to get a job. It's going to be either 95 or, in my case, 7, 7 to 7. Then you've got family commitments. Then you've got, if you become married, marriage or commitments. This time just going. Time is not going to be there. So again, the go even though you consider yourself busy during university life, you will get busier. But that saying, I understand medicine is very busy. It keeps you very busy, as in there's a lot to learn. But again, it's prioritizing. You could prioritize something for the sake of Allah and Allah will bless you with the other time. So me giving time to Ali Shara doesn't mean I'm wasting time or taking time out of my education. It's me putting something back for my akhirah and Allah will inshallah sort me out for the dunya. That's the way I saw it and that's the way I've been taught and that's what keeps me going. So I know but so how much time do you give at home then? Because you also been, I'm sure you need it at home as well yeah. like doing shopping for helping your yeah. mom, helping your dad. I'm sure you play a uh, because you're practicing by that, I'm sure you play a big role in the home as well. Definitely. Because as a Muslims, our role at home is more than outside. We need yeah. to help, we need to clean, we need to learn how to cook. You know, everything yeah. is important. We don't, we don't give, I don't know why, uh, somehow we say, oh, I'm a man, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. It's not Islamic at all. This there, is something weird thing we have in our hands. Like there's no point doing charity if you're not a good person at home. Yeah. I don't understand. I know people will say, okay, my husband is my khaniki so that means he yeah. will help Babi. So what? He's, he will do that. Why not? It's like my mum, my mum's always taught me be independent. As in, iron your own clothes, do your own bed, wash your own clothes, um, cook your own food. Because in my situation, like, I will be, I have, I have been living on my own with different placements. I have to feed for my, like, cook for myself. As in, I've got to do things on your own, be independent. That's what, alhamdulillah, for my parents, that's what they taught me. And the thing about being helpful at home, your home is your home as well, as in just because you're a guy doesn't necessarily mean that you can just close your eyes, just walk in, walk out, eat, sleep, leave. No, your house is your house because it's yours as well and you have to do your part. And I, I, Inshallah, I've, I've done what I can for my parents and the house and cooking in terms of cleaning, etc. I tried to do my best, but again, only my parents could un answer that question whether I'm doing enough or not, I wouldn't be able to do that. Would you do the same thing if you say you got married? Mm. Inshallah, you will get married, definitely. Sure. Would you help her in the home? Would, yeah, you, would, you, would you cook together? Would you uh, do hoover? Just give her a hand. Would you do it? Well, that's what my mum taught me. Alhamdulillah. 
you know, that's the best answer you've given me. Somehow, honestly, this is um, just because of those a activities we're doing at home, we don't do it. So what happens is people think we don't respect our own ones. And we don't, res we don't give them a love enough. You know, we always, because if you don't do it, you always, if you just dictate at home as a man, you're always going to get trouble as well. Who are you to dictate in everything? You know, everything is about no good to you. That's what people complain. You are a partner. Your wife is your partner. That's the beauty of Islam. And we, that's what we learned, actually. You play a role. That's what the role Prophet himself played. He used to help and cook and everything else together. That's where the beauty is. And uh, we lost that. And when I hear you know, young men like you, and when you say, Inshallah, I'm proudly in the TV and say, no, I will do it. That's what I learned from my mom. You know, your mom is, subhanAllah, we must be very proud of you, honestly. Honestly, honestly. Um, <laughs> we're going to go for a break. Otherwise, my mom will get me. <laughs> <laughs> she will say, you've never done anything in my home. Oh, you've done it in your way. That's good. I started somewhere. Though. <laughs> Later, I do. <laughs> when I do it at home, my wife would say, oh, they're coming, they're coming. They make it Before they come in, I say, you do it. And I said, look, I like to promote that. I am proud to do it. That's my kids will learn from me, like I help their mother. You may be my wife, but you're mother of my children. They will know I helped you. That's how I get respect from them. If someone helps your mother, that's what you get the respect from. If you don't, and you, you know, all the time you are moody and all that stuff. Why should they respect you? This is their mother. SubhanAllah, we get to miss that anyway. So we're going to go for a, a break and come back and talk about Inshallah, Alishallah, uh, run. Shamarin to Bible, Nera. Apnara, Takura, Mada Shatin Sidin. Inshallah, Takpin. And we'll go for a little break. Apnara, you can call us and share your views. Like, Mada Shatin, Alhamdulillah, this young man will be a doctor in, Inshallah, a year time. And he's putting his time in with the deaf Muslims. You have to have be specialized other way. After the Please call us and give us idea, inshallah. They will take you on the border and do something better, inshallah. Uh, see you after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Thank you. 